So now in this question, we have in excess moles of the acetic acid, uh, and we've got as a limiting reagent the NaOH. Now, you know, here's the information for that same equation, except that now the volume of the acetic acid is 30 milliliters. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit here. Multiplying the concentration times the volume of the acetic acid got me 0.0030 moles of acetic acid. Concentration times volume of the base got me 0 0.0020 moles of the base. Who's the limiting reagent? The base is. So how much acetic acid is left over? Well, they react in a 1 to 1 ratio, so 0 0.002 here can only react with 0 0.002 here, which leaves us with 0 0.001 moles of acetic acid. Now, if you are swift, you're saying, oh, chem guy, I can do it from here, it's not a problem. But if I have the moles of the acetic acid, and I have the new volume of the solution, which is now 40 milliliters. I divide that liters into that many moles, and I get the concentration of the acetic acid. Now, it's a weak acid, so I would have to use my Ka formula and whatnot to calculate the pH. Good thinking. Almost. All right, this is as hard as it gets. If you get this one, you get it all. The acetic acid is left over in the end. That's true. There is no more hydroxide left in this reaction. But you know what is present in the solution that is a base that must be taken into consideration this time? This forms. And it is the conjugate base ion to this weak acid. And it forms in sufficient enough concentration to mess up the pH. We actually have to find the concentration of that chemical as well as the concentration of this one, and then use a fancy formula to be able to find the pH. It's called the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula, and it's absolutely necessary because a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base in solution together constitutes something called a buffer. A buffer is a solution that resists a change in pH when small quantities of strong acid or base are added to it. You've got buffers that are running inside of your body, in your blood, to prevent your pH from actually shifting too much in your body. pH has to be maintained in your blood between about 7.35 and 7.40. Otherwise, the enzymes denature, you know, can't do their jobs, you understand. So, then you die, by the way. So, the thing is with a buffer, is that it's always a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base together in solution. When you've got those two mixed in whatever concentrations, these solutions resist the change in pH. Now, this equation is different. Now, erase the other one. This is the equation for how you would uh, write the equation for a buffer. You would add the weak acid to water, and a proton donating uh, occurs between the water and uh, the acid and the water to produce the acetate ion, the conjugate base to this, and hydronium. These two together form an acid-base pair, a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair, and these guys are an acid-base pair here. Uh, this is the weak acid, this is the acid, this is the base, this is the conjugate base, and this is the conjugate acid in this equation. Now, if you have this situation, you have a buffer, where you have concentrations of these two chemicals left over in solution. And the neat thing about it is, how do they resist the change in pH? It's through equilibrium shifting. Look, if you add hydronium to this equilibrium system, then the reaction shifts to the left to get rid of the extra hydronium you put in. So the reaction consumes the hydronium, and if you consume the hydronium and keep it to the level you had before, your pH stays the same. But what happens if you add a base? If you add a base, the base reacts with the hydronium, pulling it out. <gasps> but then the reaction shifts because it's in equilibrium to make up the hydronium that you lost. So that's how buffers work. They resist the change in pH through equilibrium shifting. That's so beautiful. Now, let's go back to those calculations. We need to determine the concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate base in solution. Here was the number of moles left over of the weak acid that we determined and the new volume of the solution to get us the concentration of the weak acid. But the concentration of the weak base must be calculated, the conjugate base in solution that made this buffer. 
Why did I put 0 decimal 00200 moles of the acetate? Remember, that's the limiting reagent amount from the screen before. You've got to maybe rewind and look at that. That limiting reagent amount is how much of that conjugate base ion formed. Divide by the new volume of the solution gets you the concentration of it. Once you have the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base, you use this formula. Now you could use an equilibrium expression, this one right here, and you could actually put in this concentration here initially and this one here initially and then go this way and do an ice box, but you don't have to do that if you memorize this. The pH of the solution of this buffer, the Henderson-Hasselbach formula, will give you, or will be derived at by taking the pKa, that's the negative log of the Ka of the weak acid, plus the log of the weak base over the weak acid. That's just an actually a manipulation of the equilibrium expression. That's all that this is right here. So, the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, which is the Ka for acetic acid, plus the log of the weak base concentration, which is this one, that's the weak base, divided by the weak acid concentration. Take the log of that, so that's actually the log of 2, added to this, which is 4.74, when you do that, negative log of that number, and you get a pH of 5.05. And that buffer will resist a change in pH and stay at 5.05 if you add a little bit of acid or a little bit of base, strong acid or strong base, to it. It's a very involved calculation. But Henderson-Hasselbalch can be very valuable if only and only to calculate the pH of a buffer in solution.